Good afternoon. I'm joined here in the press room of the Kempinski Hotel in Munich. I'm joined by Grandmaster Stefan Kinderman, who is founder of the Munich Chess Academy and also an in poor, very important person in the chess scene here in Munich. Stefan is here today with me to talk about several topics regarding chess in Munich, chess in Germany, his career as a chess player, and also his involvement and the involvement of Roman Krulik and the rest of the team in the Women's Grand Prix, which is being held currently in this hotel. Stefan, how are you doing? Yeah, thanks. thanks. I'm fine. I'm enjoying the tournament a lot. And also, uh, of course, commenting this tournament is a lot of fun. I'm doing it together with my dear colleague, Veronica Exler, international master. And it's really great fun. Well, I'll have the chance to talk to Veronica uh, <laughs> later on and ask her some very interesting questions. I was going to um, ask you to start off the interview with how the Women's Grand Prix came here to to Munich. But first, I think I'll ask you about your job as a commentator here, mm -hmm. which is one of the other questions I had. Um, of course, you're a very strong grandmaster in your own right. You've been a player many years representing uh, Germany and uh, Austria, I think, yeah. in Chess Olympiads. Mm -hmm. But here, you're working as a chess commentator. Tell us about your job as a commentator of the games, your approach to um, um, spreading the word of chess uh, online and how you uh, interact with the audience, how you interact with your co-commentators and the way you see commentating as your job here in the in the tournament. Yeah, I mean the most important is to present it in a way that it's not only um, fascinating or interesting for professionals but that we reach a broad public and even attract a broader public and show them that chess is fun, that chess is fascinating. So uh, the view as the job as commentator is um, to explain in a clear and simple way and so everybody can learn a bit but also have good entertainment and concerning I think harmony with my co-commentator Veronica at least uh, as far as I can say it um, this is working extremely well well from the outside I can, uh, <laughs> can definitely say that I'm enjoying a lot your commentary um, of course this is a commentary uh, of the game is of an all-woman tournament um, compared to other tournaments you might have commentated or or um, talked about, uh, do you see any differences in the strategies and the tactics in the games? Um, how do you see it? Do you see it differently or it's just the same idea of commentating on the chess games? No, in fact I have because I'm writing two weekly chess columns so all the time I have to follow the games of the top players and it's for me it's very interesting because in my view um, the ladies they take much more risk uh, the games are even more fighting. Of course, there are also some sometimes there are surprising blunders, but of course this is just due to the fighting spirit and to the to the strong pressure created by it. But I believe that for the public this is even more entertaining than um, at least uh, many of the games of the absolute uh, male top players. It's very interesting. Would you say that nowadays your preference is teaching, commentating, or playing? Where would you? In which order would you put those three things nowadays? Well, this was the curse of founding our chess academy and chess foundation. Since then, I nearly had no more time to play myself as an active player. I just play some games in um, in the Bundesliga. We have on our own team of our Munich Chess Academy that um, even reached the first league in Germany, which is pretty good. And uh, besides some online games, my last achievement was in the um, Austrian Internet Championship with the whole Olympic Austrian team two mm -hmm. years ago. I uh, uh, was runner-up, so I was quite proud about this, mm -hmm. because I nearly have no time anymore to train or to practice. And so usually it's for me a bit double-edged to play tournament games, because obviously I'm playing much worse, because no time to train and practice. And uh, I know the reason, but still I'm extremely angry about mm -hmm. myself, because I hate to deliver bad work. I mean, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> so let's talk about the tournament, the Women's Grand Prix. In the opening ceremony, um, Roman uh, Krulik, the main sponsor, thanked Emil Sutowski mm -hmm. um, for being the idea behind the organization of the event. Tell us about how the event came to Munich, um, how the, the decision was made, and what inspired uh, both yourself and Roman and the team to bring the tournament here? Well, at first it must be said that Roman, who is a very good friend of mine and very um, successful entrepreneur, 
uh, in the real estate sector and with a very big heart for chess and also being a strong chess player himself with peak rating 2 to 50 which for an amateur I guess is, is, is very strong, very strong yeah. and well the last year already sponsored several other tournaments one in Spain in Gran Canaria a strong grandmaster tournament where I also participated um, it was won by Valajo Pons and also in 2016 here in Munich, a beautiful Mainz tournament. Already this was maybe the first step towards this uh, Women Grand Prix, because this was a mixed tournament with three very strong uh, women okay. players. Um, also the Musichuk sisters, by the way, and Stefanova, and some strong male grandmasters. Um, uh, so she was already um, attracted somehow by the idea to involve some uh, strong women players. But then I think the first initiative came from Emil, who visited Roman in his office, and they got a very good contact, very good chemistry, so to say. They as, played some Blitz games. Yeah, I think they played Blitz yeah. games, and especially they're both Grünfeld fans, so this was already <laughs> okay. a direct a direct link. And anyway, we say chess unites the world, so, it's <laughs> so this fits well. And, and uh, well, basically, Emil asked Roman was he might imagine to do this. And Roman asked me, because we, we discuss such projects usually together, and of course I also um, was very excited about this possibility. But of course it's only possible because um, Roman is such a chess sponsor, because mm -hmm. it's definitely not uh, very cheap to, to do it, and, and it's very generous of Roman to, um, to sponsor it. So, um, Stefan, um, you have co-founded the Munich Chess Academy and Foundation, primarily supporting children in socially deprived areas children with physical disabilities, and also children affected by autism, and also young accompanied, unaccompanied refugees and elder people. Tell us please a bit about these programs, what they mean to the chess scene here in, in Munich, please. Well, the first thing to be said, and I think also um, we are working on a book project on this concept, but about this my colleague Veronica can tell a bit more later, because this is very recent development. But we are using a special didactic model, we call it Königsplan, King's Plan for kids, for kinder, based on a strategy model Königsplan that I developed together with Professor Robert von Weizsäcker, mm -hmm. that was um, directed at exec executives basically, um, that shows how to use the best strategies of the chess grandmasters for planning and decision making. And this is very successful, I'm doing this since more than 10 years as a keynote speaker and, and trainer for the Bavarian government or for companies like, for example, um, like Siemens, like Microsoft, like uh, Roche, um, like Lufthansa, and with um, very good feedbacks. But then we got the idea and it was uh, developed it together with Professor Robert von Weizsäcker, who is Professor for Economics. Uh, but then we got the idea to use this also for children to go one step beyond uh, pure chess, so to say, because the idea is um, to give them a very direct way um, to develop thinking structures, problem solving structures that they can concretely use when they have the next um, the next um, problem in math or if they have stress at the schoolyard. So then really transpose very quickly the basic strategies learned in chess mm -hmm. to real life problems. Okay. And well, this we use in schools from, from elementary schools. This works very well since more than 10 years. And um, as for the other groups, as for each group, chess does have something special. For example, for physically handicapped people, chess gives them the chance to show their incredible abilities, yes. their potential, even though they are very handicapped and cannot move, cannot speak sometimes, but chess is the medium to show their power. And well, for young refugees, <coughs> They also can show their potential, even though maybe they cannot speak German language or even not English language. And chess is a medium to do this. For example, besides of our regular programs, for example, we initiated, we called it something like something like a chess, a chess against uh, prejudice. Sounds better in German, Schacht im Vorurteil. And here the idea was to bring together Munich entrepreneurs with young refugees. Mm -hmm. And they played in teams, always two refugees with one oh, entrepreneur. And so the idea is that uh, in such a constellation, if you talk about and uh, about what will be the next move, if you discuss, you very quickly notice how clever the other one is, um, how he copes with stress and everything. And out of this, uh, many interesting contacts for the refugees emerged. They started in some of the companies, also for example, and also here's the idea to give them, beyond chess, some strategies that they can use in their new life in Germany. Of course, in the dinner you mentioned that um, basically your um, area of, um, of project was here in Munich, in the city mm -hmm. of Munich. 
I even saw a map with different yeah. um, places where you were working. Of course, the obvious question is, if this is being so success successful, as you say, and it is, uh, are there plans to expand it maybe to other areas in the South, in South Germany, or even other places in Germany, uh, ways to get um, to collaborate with other institutions or chess clubs in other areas and expand this model? Do you have plans in that sense? Well, we have plans, in a, not in a direct physical way, not so that, well, with, in the beginning we experimented with some kind of franchise models, but this is pretty um, complicated with, um, with our possibilities. But, but what we do is to, or will do, is to transfer our knowledge. We also worked on a series of uh, videos, training videos mm -hmm. with our system, um, very, very first uh, level, so to say, but it's a start. I showed a short um, clip yes. of this at, uh, in the... Um, uh, in our charity event in the video and this is quite interesting and as well concerning this knowledge transfer what my colleague Veronica maybe can say some more words I think this is very new and innovative because uh, here we'll create a compendium that shows exactly how to teach children not only chess but chess plus plus thinking in general mm -hmm. and I think this is very exciting because this can be used by by parents it can be used by trainers it mm -hmm. can be used by teachers and it's really a full program for the first one a year at least or two years even maybe this is could be part of the yeah, expansion program exactly that's what I mean so this is the, the expansion probably will be more in the sense of uh, some Technology knowledge transfer and ideas, no? but of mm -hmm. course concerning um, what we do for um, for companies for conferences um, um, uh, so far I was not only in Germany but I was in Switzerland I was in Austria mm -hmm. so this is another way how we can get active okay. so um, every year at least for the last few years there's a kids tournament in Hamburg the Alsterufe tournament mm -hmm. Uh, that reunites maybe 1,000, 2,000 kids playing chess. Um, a very exciting project. Have you done th similar things here in Munich, or do you have plans to be able to do something in that that type of um, competition, that type of event in the future? Yeah, yeah, we did. We had um, three times. We had three so-called, uh, we called it mini chess Olympiads, okay. where all the kids in those times in our programs were participating. The biggest was the last one with 300 kids from our program. It was a big success, but it also was a really big challenge uh, to organize this. And we we were very close to organize the next step with 500 kids in a beautiful castle um, and after very long and complicated negotiations in, a, in the very last moment uh, when everything was prepared it turned out that uh, no insurance would um, um, would give us an insurance what they would um, ensure the event because uh, the event because there were paintings uh, worth maybe one million each and yeah. if there would be any damage and so we said we cannot risk this as a, as a foundation and this was the reason we had to cancel it in the last moment with my colleague Diana Dengler who in this, those days was in charge for these projects mm -hmm. so uh, since this time we were <laughs> a bit more cautious and now we are more doing um, so to say local tournaments in yes. the schools where we are, we are working okay okay my last question is Stefan so, although this um, conversation has been more focused towards uh, education chess programs, you are a very strong grandmaster. You've played many years at the highest level, playing for, for Germany, playing tournaments, playing Olympiads. For those of the viewers who are fans and chess players, could you tell us which was your most memorable game and in which tournaments, so they can <laughs> look it up and see, or give us a couple of your most memorable games? Well, um, Those of the you remember fondly. concerning the opponent, for sure, my most memorable game was because then I was um, just uh, starting my career, basically. It must have been either 82 or 84 against Boris Busky. Okay. I played him four times and I still, he was still pretty strong in this time and I succeeded to beat him in a German well, Bundesliga. That's I was very proud. A but good scalp. Yeah, yes. but the quality of the game was very low. So this, <laughs> so this was, well, uh, I succeeded to beat other... Um, uh, world champions. I won against Muslov, for example, okay. against Kalifman. So uh, this I was pretty proud about. Mm -hmm. But um, it's interesting that, in my view, maybe the, my, the best game of my career was uh, something, I think, 16 move long combination um, uh, without any computer aid. Of course. <laughs> um, this was before there were any suspicions about, <laughs> uh, about cheating, um, was against some. 
äh, US äh, International Master, ist neben I think was Sarkar. Ähm, S yep. S Justin Sarkar. Yeah, yeah, Justin Sarkar, mm -hmm. nice guy. And this was played in some tournament in, in uh, South Tyrol in, um, in St. Ulrich was the name of the place. And this was only, I don't know, three or four years ago, I think. And this was really a very high quality game okay. that I well, liked a lot with the Trompovsky opening. We'll see if we can <laughs> look it up and find it. Thank you very much, Stefan. The and pleasure. it's been a pleasure to talk to you. The pleasure was on my side. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs>